evening, everybody. Oh, that was a great, hearty Christmas Eve. Good evening. Uh, I'm so glad that you guys are here. Merry Christmas Eve. Uh, we are so happy for all of the newcomers. We welcome you in. We hope that you would fill out your connection card, um, and you can drop it in the box right here on the wall so we can get to know you and reach out to you, and thank you for being a part of what we're doing today. And welcome back to anybody who is returning, and a very special Christmas Eve welcome to everybody home watching on Facebook Live or watching later on YouTube. We're glad that you decided to take uh, some time out of your Christmas Eve to be with us. Uh, why don't we stand and pray, and we'll begin our worship service. Dear Lord, we thank you. We thank you for this extra cold Christmas Eve. We thank you um, for humbling yourself and sending your son as fully God and fully man uh, to be born on Christmas in a manger and, and how amazing that story is, Father. And we just thank you for that. And we pray that this Christmas Eve would be full of hope and love and, Father, that we would have open hearts and open minds to what you have to bring to us today through this service. We love you. In your name we pray. Amen. Angels, we have heard. to invite Don and Cassie Neely to come and bring our Advent greeting and candle lighting. Sometimes we forget that the incarnate God took on all that it means to be human. Jesus did not flee from complicated feelings or situations. Instead, he entered into them. He does not flee from us either. He seeks to embrace us in the midst of our messiness. The story of Christmas reminds us there is no distance that God wouldn't travel to be with us. The love of God seeks us out where we are. Because we are loved, we are reminded to love the people of the world. Just as Christ loved us in the midst of our midst, we are to love others where they are. Today we light all five Advent candles, hope, joy, peace, love, and the Christ candle. Each of these is at the heart of the Christmas story. Jesus gave up heaven for humanity to become Emmanuel, God with us. God near us to even now, even in the midst of our midst of our best. The model of Jesus Christ motivates us to care for the world around us. We are the beloved of God, and we are called to be a community of love toward those around us. God of love, we sometimes forget that you come to earth for us. We sanitize the image of your coming, and we feel like we aren't worthy of the love of God. But you didn't shy away from our messy circumstances. Instead, you entered right into the middle of them. Remind us that there is no distance you wouldn't go because of your great love for us. Then give us your heart of love for the world around us, that they may know that they are loved by you too. Amen.
to greet each other, handshakes, hugs, high fives, Christmas style, so make it extra, extra love filled. And children, we we're going to give you guys a minute during that time to come to the front. Parents, you can join your kids to move up to the front. We're going to do something special for them after our greeting time. So 120 seconds on the clock, two minute warning. Handshakes, hugs, high fives, let's go. the kids gathered up here I would encourage if there's any more kids to come up front because at the end of our time sitting here we're going to send you back to your grown-ups with a gift so you're going to help us tell the Christmas story and then you get to go back to your seat with a gift so that's pretty pretty amazing so here's what we're going to do today kids you guys are going to help to tell the story of the very first Christmas, which is what we're celebrating tonight. Now, you guys are going to have a job to do, and I'm going to need some help. So first of all, uh, my girl kids, whenever, this is Mr. Ken. If you guys don't know Mr. Ken, this is Mr. Ken. Can you guys say, hi, Mr. Ken? Okay, perfect. He's the one who's going to read the story tonight, but he needs some help. So Here's what we need. I need all the girl kids. Whenever Mr. Ken says child, I want you to put your hand over your heart and say love. Can you practice that child? Love. Wonderful. Wonderful. Okay. Now, boys, you have a job too. Whenever Mr. Ken says angels, you are going to say peace. Peace. Okay. So let's try it again. Okay. Child. The girls say love. And the, when, I, when we say angels, the boys are going to say, okay. Now, should we make the grown-ups have a job too? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, ladies, whenever Ken says Mary, you're going to act like you are seeing a baby and go, aw. Okay. Men, whenever Ken says Joseph, you guys have to say something, but what do you think you should say? Yo? <laughs> Okay, yo, it is. <laughs> okay, so men, wait, Joseph? Okay, let's go through this real quick. Child? Angels? Mary? Joseph? Ken, they're ready for you. Ooh. This is all you, man. All right. Ah, uh, the Christmas story, as from. The book of Luke, 
chapter 2. All right, so Joseph. Oh. I was, see, I was testing you. So Joseph went to the city of David called Bethlehem to be registered with Mary to whom he was engaged and who was expecting, wait a minute. Oh, no, that is right. You ladies did fine. Thank you. All right. I thought they, I thought they mixed it up, but it was me. <laughs> She's never going to ask me to do this again. Okay. <laughs> All right, and she was expecting a child. Is it? No, that's love. Love. See, I messed everybody up. All right, while they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. Now, in that region... In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flocks by night. And then an angel. <laughs> and then an angel. There we go. Of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone all around them, and they were terrified. Ah, oh, but the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you this day is born in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God in the highest heaven and saying, On earth, peace among those whom he favors. And when the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. Page turn. So they went with haste, the shepherds, and they found Mary and Joseph and the child. La. Lying in the manger. Yes, I lost my face. When they saw this, they made known what they were told about this child and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them but Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart all right let us pray gracious Lord and heavenly father we are just so thankful tonight you richly blessed us with the with the most precious gift we could ever receive your son Jesus Christ. We thank you today in this place. We've all had the honor and privilege of reliving this most blessed event one more time. Lord, we ask that each of you, I'm sorry, Lord, we ask that each of us will carry in our hearts a piece of this Christmas story and that you will give us the strength and the courage to share its meaning with others through the coming holidays and in the coming year. Grant us that courage and bravery, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you, Mr. Ken. Can you give him our uh, round of applause, our wonderful children's ministry director? Okay, so kiddos, in an orderly fashion, please grab a bag, take it back to your seat. They are all the same. You can use everything that's in that during the service to help you Listen attentively, but have busy hands. So, I gave my kids an early Christmas present. Well, okay, a really early Christmas present. 
we installed a zip line in our backyard now. Like, I'm talking suburban, not super huge backyard kind of zip line, but it's still really fun. So, so we have a picture, so you can just kind of understand the, the scale of what I'm talking about. Um, okay. So that's the platform to get up to my zip line. So, you know, be impressed, but not too impressed, okay? But, uh, so anyway, my, my dad was over and um, was helping us figure out kind of the, the engineering required for this because it has to be a certain length and height um, and all that jazz. And so we said, let's do it for Christmas. And he's like, but it's warm today. And I was like, okay, let's do it today. So we did it. And so then we've been zipping. Well, I haven't been zipping. The kids have been zipping. My dad zipped. Um, but I tried. The kids asked, Mommy, will you, will you do the zip line? And I said, well, I'm like a little bit afraid. <laughs> Guys, I, don't judge me, okay? <laughs> I was a little bit afraid. Because when you climb the little coaster thing and then you climb the stepladder and then you're up there, I mean, I'm still maybe like, I don't know, eight feet high. But then you have to get on the disc seat with an adult-sized body. You have to hook one leg around it and hold and then you know what happens? Then it starts to zip before you get your second leg around it. And I am terrified. I could not do it. I just couldn't. I got up there. I tried. And I was like, nope, this isn't for me. Merry early Christmas, guys. Have a blast. Well, that was not good enough <laughs> for, uh, for my son, Eldon, who knows I'm going to tell this story tonight. Because he wanted me to have just as much fun as he was. So he would ask me, Mom, have you done it yet? Mom, when will you do it? Mom, will you do it Saturday? I was like, okay, now I got to give him a date? I was like, well, maybe Saturday if it's not raining and this and that. Well, a Saturday finally came. It was not raining. And I went back up there. And I climbed up and I climbed up. And I got the one leg around. And I was like, nope, I cannot, I cannot even do this. This is not the activity for me. Well, he had an idea. He said, Mom, what if I hold on to the rope while you get on? I was like, oh, okay. So he drags it over. He holds the bottom of the rope. I put one leg on Elda. Keep holding that rope. Keep holding that rope. Don't let go. I put, get, start to put my other leg. Do not let go until you say, know that I am ready. And then once I was on, then he let go, and I zipped. And it was fun, and I didn't die. <laughs> we recreated the moment. Would you guys like to see it? Okay. Don't judge me. It's so awkward. Okay. So you can kind of kind of look on the, like, the wayside over there. I'm getting up slowly. Oh, why did I do this? Okay. <laughs> okay. So what made the difference? It was just as high as it was before. I still have this fear of getting injured. But what made the difference was that someone was with me. <laughs> you guys know what I'm talking about? Isn't it amazing what you can do when someone is with you? You can be braver. You can try new things. You can get through something that's harder. The presence of someone else can be with us through the hard stuff and also just makes life a lot more enjoyable. It matters when someone is with us. And at Christmas time, we talk about Emmanuel, which means God with us. Ken read uh, about the night Jesus was born, and he was in the Gospel of Luke. But I want to take us back in time a little bit. I want us to go into Matthew chapter 1, starting at verse 18, to the night that Joseph found out his role in this whole Christmas story. So Matthew 1, 18. Now the birth of Jesus the Messiah took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been engaged to Joseph, but before they lived together... She was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. Her husband Joseph, being a righteous man and unwilling to expose her to public disgrace, planned to dismiss her quietly. 
But just when he had resolved to do this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All of this took place to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Look, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. When Joseph awoke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took her as his wife, but had no marital relations with her until she had borne a son, and he named him Jesus. I love that little chunk of phrasing that's in there in verse 23. They shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. So God, in this mysterious three-in-one reality, God, Jesus, Holy Spirit, didn't, didn't stay. Jesus didn't stay in a sanitized, perfect heaven. No, God came to us in the person of Jesus through birth into the mess of hay, which if you're up here, guys, it makes a mess. From the start, his life, his humanity was messy. Jesus came into the world and a life in a culture of sheep and shepherds, the earthiness of wool and animal droppings. A life where there was travel by foot. And poverty was the standard way of life. Jesus lived with us, with humanity. He, he lived through the vulnerability of being a baby. And then the highs and lows of being a toddler and a kid and a teen. Jesus lived like us. Through popularity and rejection, through laughter and anger, through birth and through death. And of course, there was ways that Jesus was different from us too. Being God with us, he performed miracles. He healed people, restoring their broken hearts, their broken bodies. He imparted dignity. He raised the dead. And ultimately himself, he beat death on the cross to rise again three days later in full and holy splendor, providing a path for redemption for all who say yes to following him, for us to be with God in this life and in the hereafter. After Jesus' resurrection, when he, when he left the earth, he ascended, he went, he went up to heaven. He didn't leave us high and dry when that happened. He remained God with us. He left us the gift of the Holy Spirit. Do you ever think about that? That's another way that God is with us. So today I want to look at some ways that God is still with us today. And, and the first is just as simple as that, as the, the Holy Spirit. But Let's get a little bit more tangible. So we have, how is God with us? One, through the Holy Spirit. Two, prayers, dreams, and visions. We heard about that in the story of Luke. But those days haven't ended. God is still with us in those ways. Now, I think of these lists, probably most of us here would be most comfortable with the idea of prayer. Am I right? I think people, even if they're not of a specific faith, uh, they're generally okay with the idea of prayer. It doesn't weird people out religiously like other concepts do. Um, you know, here in this church, the simplest way that we talk about prayer is simply that it's talking to God. Now, when you develop a prayer life, as it, as it gets richer, it can be more than that. There can be other elements that you add in. But at its basic level, it's, it's talking to God. Now, one of the first things you want to do when you develop a prayer life that goes deeper is you want to start listening back. Listening for God. I mean, maybe it's clear to you 
what God has to say. That, that does happen. I know there's people in this room, me included, that sometimes uh, what God has for us is very clear through prayer. But often, sometimes, we hear through a, a sense or an intuition, a presence or a, a leading in our prayers. But what about the other ones? What about dreams and visions? In our culture, I, I think that sometimes, maybe a lot of the time, we, we're very focused on logic. We love stuff that's evidence-based and research, and I'm not dissing those, right? I think those things are great. But I sometimes wonder if we shut our eyes and our hearts to things that go beyond what we've figured out yet. And so dreams and visions impacting our lives might be something that we're not as sensitive or open to. But that doesn't actually make it a universal truth. In fact, if you look at stories of people across the world, dreams and visions still happen even today, inspiring people and leading to tangible miracles. I want to tell you a story about a family, a migrant family. They were on a boat, and they were going from Turkey to Greece in, in search of a place where they could live in safety. I don't know where this particular family came from, but I do know that that pathway across the Aegean Sea is one where migrants who have experienced political strife will go. If you think about where Turkey is in the world, nearby, you have where the Taliban have taken over in Afghanistan. There's a political crisis in Somalia, and, and as people take stories, they found that people making that journey are those escaping from Somalia. There's also unrest in Lebanon that people try to free, flee from, as well as other places in the Middle East. So this family, I don't know exactly where they came from, but they are in a, a group of people that are, that are boating in this way that has become a pathway. The family, they're on their boat, crowded together, and they realize that their seven-year-old has gone missing. Now, when you're on a crowded boat, there's only one place where you can go if you're missing, and it's in the water. So everybody is looking out in the water. I can only imagine the heartache and fear and terror you would feel in that moment. And then they hear the little girl calling out. She's on the opposite side of the boat where they expected her to be. And they scoop her out of the water. And she tells them, there was a man who walks on water. And he brought me to the other side. Her parents have never heard such nonsense in their lives. But they're just so grateful to have her back. They think it's the story of a, of a child in trauma, and they write it off. But then they land. They land on the, the Greek island of Lesbos. And when they get there, there's a man who makes a fire and offers to talk with them. They, they learn this man is a Christian, and this is how he lives out his faith, as he knows that these boats come, and he wants to give these migrants a warm welcome. So as he sits with them around the fire, and they begin to talk, he feels that the opportunity is there for him to share a little bit about his faith. And, and so he doesn't know their story or what happened to him, them that day, but, but he asks them, would you like to know about a God who walked on water? They've never heard this weird phrase in their life. What do you mean a God who, who walked on, on water? What does that mean? And he opened his Bible and he told them the story of Jesus walking on water. And that day they got to learn about Jesus. Emmanuel, God with us. God was with them in the midst of that moment. God was with the man in the midst of his kindness in his ministry. It brings us to another way that God is with us today, and that's through others. 
many, many people, many people who are Christians or of all sorts of religions or no religion at all are kind and do wonderful things, right? I mean, that's a wonderful thing about our world and, and the awareness of kindness we have in our culture right now. And that's great to see. But I will say that for Christians, there's an extra call in that that goes beyond general kindness. And that's that we believe that when somebody's following Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit comes in them and gives them an extra ability to go beyond their human strength to show love to others. A Holy Spirit power. Now, here's the deal. Has anybody ever known a Christian that wasn't very kind? We all have. We all have. It doesn't mean that you're perfect. I'm not saying that at all. And frankly, the truth is that when the Holy Spirit lives in you, when you've said yes to being Jesus, you have a choice. You have a choice of how much you are willing to obey and change and grow and face hard things and do uncomfortable things and learn and grow in that or not. But when Christians live up to that, when we seek to be a glimpse of God with us to others, and we do brave things. Sometimes they're big, but sometimes they're just as simple as the one right next thing, the one next act of kindness or love or generosity or service can make all the difference in the world. Like that man with the fire on the beach. I want to tell you another story. Uh, Pastor Amy Butler, she recounts her own story of God with us. It was in her first year of ministry, and she was working at a large shelter in New Orleans. And we think of New Orleans as being a warm place, but that winter, that Christmas Eve was very cold. And so every shelter was full. It was her job to greet people and tell them, we don't have room for you. I mean, that's a terrible way. That's a terrible job for anybody. But I think, like, as a pastor on Christmas Eve, that would just be the worst. So the sun starts to set, and yet another face comes to the door. This time it's a woman. She has two children with her, a boy and a girl. They're about 10, 12 years old, well-dressed. This is a little confused, a little judgy at first about what their story could possibly be. Looking how they did, looking pretty good on Christmas Eve. The, the mom walked up to her and opened up, and the words just tumbled out, and, and she said that my husband has a problem with drugs. Tonight, I needed to just get out. So we just walked out before the violence could start. We have some friends, they, they live in Mississippi, we know they can help us, but for tonight, I just need somewhere to be. Can you just make room for us for one night tonight? And Pastor Amy's job was literally to say, there is no room at the inn. And it was going to break her heart to say it again. So she's in the midst of trying to get the words out. When she realizes that the phone behind the desk is ringing and ringing and ringing. And she gets to tell people no on the phone, too. So she needs to go and answer that phone. So she goes and she picks it up. And there's a woman on the other end. This is what she said. This is a strange request. But I've already called all the other shelters in town, and no one seems to know what I'm talking about. I live by myself, and I have a rather demanding job, but yesterday while I was praying, I felt God telling me that a family was coming to visit me, and that family would need my help on Christmas. And so I'm not sure, but I think that this woman maybe has a couple of kids, maybe they're like young teenagers, and, and I felt so strongly about it that I went out and I bought decorations and presents and food. And I, I don't really do big Christmas alone for myself, but everything's ready. 
The tree is up, the presents are wrapped, the ham is in the oven, but I have been trying since yesterday to find the family that God wants me to help. Do you have them? As Amy listened, she could hear in this woman's voice that the woman kind of thought she was crazy. You know, like this is her own story and it sounds pretty wacky. So she looked across the lobby and said, just a moment, please. She went to the mom and said, excuse me, but I believe this call is for you. And the rest is history. The caller came. She picked up the family. They had Christmas together. Two days later, the mama and her kids got on the bus to Mississippi and whatever that next chapter of their life was. Emmanuel, God with us. And God through us. God is with us through the Holy Spirit. God is with us through prayer, through visions, through dreams, through the miraculous, be it big things or small things. And God is with us through other people. And friends, God is not just with us, but God is with you and you and you and you. God is with you. If you are facing a big challenge or a big change, remember God with you. If you're facing a medical procedure, remember God with you. If you need courage to to apologize for a way you've messed up, remember God with you. If you need to bite your tongue in the face of someone saying something upsetting, Or the flip side, if you know it's time to speak up, God with you. If you're a student and you're struggling to learn something, God with you. If you're finally ready to admit the truth about that thing you've been hiding, God with you. If you need to face your grief, look at the old pictures, go through that sealed up box or room, God with you. If you're lonely, God with you. If you're in pain, emotional or physical, God with you. And if you feel far from God, God with you. Emmanuel, God with us, will hold that rope steady while you work up the courage to zip into what's next. Emmanuel, God with you, will meet you when you feel lost in the waters and you need a rescue. Emmanuel, God with you, will show up in unexpected ways during your deepest needs to connect you with the right resources at the right time. So friends, look for hope. Look for miracles. Look for God's presence all around Open your heart, even just to crack, for a way that you can glimpse God with you in big ways and small ways. Let's pray. God, we come before you this Christmas Eve to remember the birth of Emmanuel, God with us, so long ago. I'm grateful for the mess of that story. The mess of a unwed mother. The mess of a hurt fiance. The mess of a vision of a future that was disrupted. The mess of being turned away. the mess of birth and a manger and a shepherd culture, the mess that came with the family having to flee from Herod, the mess of parenting a son who would be really hard to parent if he's, if he's morally perfect, the mess of loving someone who others would reject, and put to death. It's a messy story, God, but I'm so grateful because we live messy lives and we are messy people. 
And that's why we need you, God, with us. Tonight, God, I pray that, that each person here, each person watching online would feel your presence, your love, and know that you are God with us. Each person here can say, Lord, you are God with me as well. Bless us, Lord, as we continue to celebrate and worship you. In your name we pray, amen. So we're going to move into our time of candlelight. And so um, what we're going to do is I'm going to light these four candles up here. There's four sections here. And so uh, if someone from each section, uh, maybe in the front row, would come up, and um, light for your section, that would be great. Also, I want to show you the protect the carpet trick. The lit candle stays up, and the other candle dips. <laughs> oh, you guys are so fast, I don't even have to light those candles. I like this group. Great, thank you. And you can take, yeah, you can take those back to your aisle, sure. And we'll begin to pass, and uh, if we'll have our, our lights dimmed, you can appreciate that light as it comes up. As we pass, if you'd like to stand, we'll sing Silent Night together in just a moment.
blow your candles out. If you will, as we wrap up our service, if you'll do what you can to keep them upright, and then at the end of our service, um, on each side, we have, it looks like a trash can, but that's actually where you can put your candles. You may be seated. We're going to um, wrap up with some announcements, and we'll sing one last Christmas song together. So we hope that if you are around tomorrow that you will join us for our 11 a.m. service. It's Christmas Unplugged. It's going to be a very cozy, fun service where we have different folks from the congregation who will be doing songs and readings. And uh, then we're going to eat cinnamon rolls together. So uh, we have procured a lot of Cinnabon today that will be delicious and waiting tomorrow morning. So if you are available, we'd love to have you. Um, If not, we hope that you'll join us on New Year's Day or on January 8th when we kick off our sermon series, Growing Generosity. Um, In your bulletin, We do have a connection card, so if you're new or if there's a way that we can pray for you or anything else you'd like us to know, you can complete that. And then out this side, we have a black box on the wall that is for connection cards and offering as well. So we're going to pray one more time together, and then we'll rise as able, and we will end out the evening with singing joy to the world. God, thank you for this time. Thank you for this beautiful night. I Just think about how the room starts dark, and as the light spreads, how it becomes bright and beautiful. And God, I think about the power of God with us works in that same way, where you are the light, and you allow your light to shine through those who follow you, Lord. May each one of us be part of that brightness and beautifulness in the world so that others may know that God is with them as well. In your name we pray. Amen. Let's sing. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her King. Let every heart prepare Him through. Let the nature sing. Everybody go in peace.